Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to another interesting and informative Power Retail webinar session. We've got an exciting topic today on customer experience challenges. So my name is Grant Arnott. I'm the publisher of Power Retail, and I'll be introducing our guest speaker very shortly. Before that introduction, though, some quick housekeeping. First of all, the toilets. I hope you know where they are because this is a webinar and I certainly can't help you. Your mobile phones, turn them to silent because I can't ridicule you if it goes off because I won't hear it, but that's beside the point. You want to pay attention because this is going to be a great session. Post any questions you have to the dialog box in the sidebar in the webinar software. We'll let our speaker complete his presentation and then we'll field your questions at the end of the session. So today, from one of the best researchers in this industry, you're going to hear how your retail peers rated their challenges with managing multiple channels, stores online, mobile, social media, call centers, attracting and retaining customers, their ability to monitor customer experience and opinions on current Aussie retail conditions. So make sure you do stay until the questions at the end where you'll have an opportunity to interact with our guest speaker. Now, before we officially begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, NetSuite, who brings us today's webinar. Founded in 1998, NetSuite has experienced substantial growth with revenues of $556 million, which is 34% growth over the prior year. NetSuite has offices in more than 10 countries and have been in Australia now for over eight years. Today, more than 24,000 companies and subsidiaries depend on NetSuite to run complex, mission-critical business processes globally in the cloud. Since its inception in 1998, NetSuite has established itself as the leading provider of enterprise-ready cloud business management suites of enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, and e-commerce applications for businesses of all sizes. Many Fortune 100 companies rely on NetSuite to accelerate innovation and business transformation. And now I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Mark Dugan, who's the Managing Director, ANZ, of Frost & Sullivan. So Mark is a highly experienced marketing and strategy consultant with over 20 years of management and strategy consulting experience, having worked for clients in the UK, continental Europe, North America, Asia Pacific, Australia, and New Zealand. Mark specializes in market assessment and expansion strategies, customer analysis and segmentation and mergers, joint ventures and acquisitions. And now to take you through the customer experience challenge for Australian retailers. Please welcome Mark Dugan. Thanks very much indeed, Grant, and uh, good afternoon or good morning to you all, depending on which part of the country you're in. Uh, thanks very much for taking the time out of your schedule to attend today's session, and, and we do hope that you find it interesting and informative. Uh, just to let you know that after the end of today's session, uh, you will receive an email which will have a link both to a recording of today's webinar, if you wanted to share that with anybody else who you feel may be interested in it, uh, and also a link to download from the NetSuite website a, uh, a full report or white paper which has uh, more detail on the research we've undertaken that we'll be presenting today. So after today's webinar, you will be able to access both a more detailed report and a recording of the webinar. So let's move on to talk about what we see as the customer experience challenge for Australia's retailers. So over recent years, uh, I think there's little doubt that the retail environment has become increasingly tough for retailers, uh, particularly as weakening consumer demand has intersected with factors like rising costs and the emergence of alternatives to the traditional bricks and mortar shop. And in particular, of course, what we're seeing is that shoppers are responding with gusto to, this, to the new multi-channel world with most Australian consumers uh, now using a combination of physical and digital channels as part of the shopping process. And in light of some of these issues, retailers have responded by refreshing their offerings and developing um, new channels and, and new ways to match the way that today's consumers want to shop. Now, another response we found has been a greater focus on what we call managing the customer experience. As retailers have sought to improve the experience that their customers have with them, and by doing so, improve customer loyalty and drive sales. And managing this customer experience is now a key strategic imperative for many of Australia's retailers. So we wanted to explore how retailers in Australia are responding to the customer experience challenge. We undertook interviews with uh, just over 100 retailers that are members of the Australian Retailers Association, including both small retailers that we define as those with less than 10 stores, and medium and large retailers with 10 stores and more. And I'd like to thank both the ARA uh, for giving us access to their members and all the individual retailers who participated uh, in our study. 
Well, I think there's little doubt that over recent years, the environment for the 74,000 or so retail businesses in Australia has become significantly more challenging. There's been what we might call a sea change in consumer spending habits. If we look at the situation both pre and post GFC, we can see that change is quite dramatic. In the eight or so years up to 2008, uh, there was fairly healthy annual growth in, in retail sales, with each year sales on average growing by 6.3% a year. But since the GFC, there's really been quite a major shift. Uh, retail sales growth since 2009 has basically halved and has averaged about 3.4% per year in the period since. So I guess there are probably a number of factors that have underpinned this change. Um, given the economic and often some of the psychological shocks that the GFC in inflicted, consumers are focused more on saving or perhaps paying down debt than on consumption. But when they have consumed, we've seen a much greater focus on what you might call spending on experiential uh, items such as travel and eating out, uh, and a much uh, lower focus on uh, purchasing of physical goods. So in addition to this reduced consumer appetite to shop, uh, retailers have also had to contend with a number of other headwinds, uh, including, of course, high rents for bricks and mortar premises and, and, and increasing uh, operating costs in other areas, and the huge growth in online shopping, particularly since about 2008. With much of this growth, we estimate perhaps 40 to 45 percent of online shopping expenditure actually going to overseas-based retailers. So the first question we asked uh, retailers in our study was, was about general trading conditions, particularly how retailers are finding trading conditions compared to a year earlier. And we actually asked a similar question to retailers in a survey we did in 2013. So it's interesting to see the comparison between uh, the, the, the same question being asked this year and in 2013. So in light of some of the challenges that I mentioned uh, on the previous slide, it's perhaps not surprising that many retailers are still cautious, if not pessimistic. Uh, with limited signs of any improvement in general retail conditions. 39% uh, of retailers feel that business conditions in 2015 uh, are, wor are worse than a year ago, and actually 28% feel they're better. And this is a reduction from 35% of retailers in 2013 who felt that conditions were better than a year ago. And the picture actually is particularly bad for the uh, medium and large retailers, 42% uh, of whom believe that conditions in 2015 have worsened. And when we probed behind some of these views a little bit deeper, retailers in our interviews pointed to a number of challenges facing their business. Uh, operating costs are often seen as too high and inflexible. Uh, competition from online retailers is strengthening. And recruiting and retaining staff is an ongoing challenge. But for above all, uh, for retailers in Australia, attracting and retaining customers is the number one challenge that they face today. And this challenge is consistently the main one facing Australia's retailers. It was also ranked as the most significant challenge by retailers in 2013. So as well as some of the, the issues I've talked to earlier, we've also, of course, seen an increased willingness of consumers to use digital channels to shop or as part of a broader shopping uh, or commerce process. So the retail environment has changed from one based purely on physical stores to one comprising a much broader range of channels for both transacting and communicating with customers. And these channels now include websites, mobile apps, social media, and so on. So in 2007, uh, about 60% of Australians shopped online. In 2013, it's close to 80%. And the number who shop on a mobile device is now close to 30%, or almost a third of the population, up from pretty much nothing uh, four or five years ago. Uh, and this growth in, on, in, on, in digital channels, or use of digital channels for, uh, for commerce, is it's reflected, in, in fact, in online sales, which are growing by almost 10% annually, significantly faster than bricks and mortar retail sales. Uh, online sales are now about 7% of all retail sales in Australia, but we still think that significant further growth is likely, as Australia still lags comparable markets such as the UK and the US, where the proportion of retail sales taken by the online channel or digital channels more generally is much higher than in Australia. Now, the online channel, I think, increasingly needs to be seen not as a separate standalone channel to, to bricks and mortar, but actually as part of a single shopping process uh, where multiple channels are used as part of a single transaction, uh, what you might call multi-channel or perhaps even omni-channel retail. So the changing retail environment and the emergence of the multi-channel retail model are driving uh, quite a profound change in the way that retailers manage their business. Uh, retailers are moving away from the traditional aspirations of increasing uh, sales year on year uh, and putting more effort into measuring and monitoring customer satisfaction and lifetime value. 
Yet with customers now using multiple channels to interact and transact, both the management and measurement of the customer experience have become infinitely more challenging. Uh, you could say, I suppose, that the number of moments of truth that a customer has with a retailer has grown markedly. A decade ago, customer experience was shaped largely only by in-store interaction, the store design, layout, the in-store service, stock range, availability, and so on. But now that experience is formed by a much broader range of interactions across all of these multiple channels, online, mobile, social media, perhaps call centers, perhaps web chats, as well as the physical uh, store. So how are retailers in Australia responding to these uh, emerging uh, channels that are used as part of a, an integrated shopping process? Well, most of them are responding uh, by introducing new channels to complement their physical stores. When we surveyed in 2013, only about 50% of retailers saw the internet as an opportunity, and over a quarter saw it as a threat. However, since then, the majority of retailers have adapted to the online world, and the majority of Australia's retail businesses are now multi-channel businesses. Uh, almost 90% of retailers now have a website. Uh, that's up from uh, just over 50% in 2013. Over 80% have a social media presence. That's up from just under a third in 2013. And 61% now offer transactional capability on their website, up from 38% in 2013. And 43% now have a mobile optimized website or perhaps a mobile application. And that's up from 28% in 2013. So in as little as two years, there's been quite a dramatic increase in the use of these online or digital channels by Australian retailers, with a significant increase in the proportion of retailers that use websites, uh, social media channels, uh, and mobile channels, both mobile websites and apps to interact and to transact uh, with customers. We asked retailers what, are the, what is the single biggest challenge that you face in 2015 as a retailer. Uh, and interestingly, the answers were quite similar to 2013, where the most important single challenge was attracting and retaining customers. There are clearly other challenges for retailers, including high costs, online competition, recruiting and retaining staff, uh, supply is increasing prices, particularly as the Aussie dollar depreciates and so on. But the single most important challenge that retailers say they face in 2015 is the same as the challenge they face in 2013, that is attracting and retaining uh, customers. And that's why we argue that successfully managing the customer experience is the key to retail success. I think uh, the link, if you like, the direct link between having satisfied customers and having a successful business has been empirically proven uh, back in the 1990s. Uh, but perhaps a few facts on this slide might just re-emphasize the importance of having satisfied customers that have a good experience with you. Highly satisfied customers overall are 75% more likely to prefer your brand, 60% more likely to continue doing business with you, 83% uh, more likely to purchase more from you, 63% more likely to purchase from you the next time they're in the market for a similar product, 77% more likely to give your brand a positive recommendation to others. So it's very important that uh, your customer experience management process delivers highly satisfied customers because really that's absolutely critical to your business success. So what do we mean by the management of the customer experience? Well, we see it as the process by which your organization manages how customers engage with you, not just in a particular snapshot in time, but throughout the entire period of the relationship. And a customer will come into contact with your organization through a series of interactions in increasingly different, different range of channels. Uh, and at each time they interact with you, they gain some experience of your organization. You could call each of these interactions a moment of truth. The moment of truth, it's an incident in which a customer comes into contact with you and gets an impression of you and your service. And this expansion of the number of different ways that customers can interact with your organization has made the management of the customer experience more complex because there's a lot more moments of truth in a lot more channels for you to manage. Uh, and as I mentioned, organizations that have, if you like, solved this challenge and have, have, have really focused on giving customers an excellent and seamless experience across all channels are ones that are most likely to experience better business performance. So when we interviewed retailers, we, we interviewed those who we believed were pretty much best practice in terms of customer experience management, as well as many, of course, who still have a significant way to go. And the ones that we regard as best practice really have four main attributes or four main elements to how they manage the customer experience process. And I'd call those convenience, consistency, recognition, and personalization. Convenience is really all around making sure that uh, the, every interaction that you have with a customer is as convenient for that customer as it could possibly be. 
whether it's through your website, through a mobile app, through a mobile channel or in store. Uh, consistency really is around making the experience across all these multiple channels as consistent as possible in things like pricing and the way that your brand is presented and so on. Recognition really is around the fact that customers want to be recognized at every point of interaction, regardless of the channels they've used previously. So I'll show you, you we, we all find it frustrating when we deal with uh, a particular organization, perhaps on multiple occasions, and every time we deal with them, we have to reintroduce ourselves to them in terms of uh, logging in or perhaps giving a name or some kind of account number or something that makes the organization uh, fail to recognize us from the previous time that we've interacted with them. And finally, uh, the fourth element of what we call excellent multi-channel customer experience management is around personalization. Offering every customer an experience that's highly personalized given their particular needs, their particular circumstances, and their particular requirements. Particularly when it comes to promotional messages, we're finding cons uh, consumers really want promotional messages that are highly personalized to their individual needs, which retailers or other organizations can derive from the history of interaction that they've had with that particular customer. So it's around using customer data to, to offer an increasingly personalized offering uh, to your customers. So of course, offering excellent customer experience is uh, easier said than done, and it's become significantly harder over the recent years. Uh, back a few years ago, customer experience really only involved one single channel, that's the in-store channel, and interaction uh, was really just about personal interaction with customers. Nowadays, of course, we have a much broader range of channels. Customers still shop in store, but they also shop or interact with us online uh, through social media or over the internet. Uh, it's much more complex to manage this experience in a holistic and integrated fashion. Uh, and that's one of the major challenges that retailers tell us that they face uh, in 2015, is this divergence in the channels and being able to offer an integrated and seamless customer experience across all of these individual channels. We also ask retailers whether they have a process in place, a formalized process for measuring and monitoring customer experience. Uh, because whilst attracting and retaining customers is seen as the top priority for retailers, many do lack a formal strategy for doing so, as well as a measurement and monitoring framework to check whether any strategy that they have in place is working. 42% uh, of retailers and in fact 51% of small retailers currently do not have a strategy to improve the customer experience. And for those that do have a strategy, the main aspect is improving the customer facing skills of their staff. Uh, with 34% of retailers also planning to improve the accuracy and, and, and use of their customer database. There's quite a wide discrepancy we found amongst retailers, particularly if we di differentiate between medium and small retailers, uh, medium and large retailers, should I say, and, and, and small ones, in terms of how and whether they're monitoring uh, the customer experience. Uh, so whilst 89% of retailers feel that they currently offer either an excellent or a good customer experience, and only 2% actually feel they offer a poor experience, uh, for many, this judgment is based on perception uh, rather than reality. For example, 82% of small retailers are not monitoring the customer experience at all. Uh, actually, 38% of medium and large retailers aren't doing it either. Uh, but particularly for small retailers, it's quite a significant issue because they're really relying just on anecdotal information, perhaps on customer complaints uh, to, to indicate to them whether or not their customers are happy with them. Uh, when we look at the use of perhaps more formal metric-based approaches to measuring customer experience, such as the use of net promoter scores, uh, no small retailers are using it. Um, over a third, almost 40% of medium and large retailers are doing it. So there's quite a significant differentiation we find between the medium and large retailers and the small retailers, both in their adoption of formal strategies for customer experience management, but also in the use of formalized measurement and monitoring approaches so they can tell whether the customer experience management that they're adopting is actually working. Now, when we talk to retailers about some of the challenges that they are facing in managing customer experience in today's multi-channel world, they point to a number of issues, but I think they can be boiled down into three main fundamental challenges. Uh, and these can be organizational as well as infrastructural. Uh, Many retailers still operate in silos when managing their customers' multi-channel experience. And various functions within a retailer, such as the online channel, in-store service, contact center, delivery, can be managed independently within an organization and often use different business systems. So it, it's difficult in, in perhaps offering an integrated approach uh, that combines all customer touch points within a single organizational structure, because traditionally many of these touch points have been managed uh, independently. So therefore, taking this integrated approach is perhaps easier said than done. 
particularly when retailers have existing uh, legacy IT systems that support individual uh, business functions. Uh, we're finding actually that the key to managing the customer experience is to have a single uh, database to start with that has a single and unique record for every customer that's accessible in real time at every point of interaction. And the richer the information the database can be, the better as this enables um, tailored and relevant interactions uh, with customers. For example, sending timely and relevant promotional messages via SMS or in-app messaging when a customer is near to one of your stores. Uh, and this personalization is increasingly critical to customer experience management. Uh, consumers are responsive really to offers and communications that are relevant to them and very unresponsive to those that are not. Uh, and I think we, we might argue or, or agree that the online giant Amazon is perhaps the most advanced in this use of customer analysis to deliver highly personalized messages uh, to its consumers and deliver a highly personalized experience. So I guess we can boil down the challenges that retailers face into these three main areas. The rapid proliferation of touch points that, that customers have with them that I've alluded to in some of the previous slides. The increasingly complex customer journey that customers go on that doesn't just involve walking into a store anymore, but can involve a series of steps through a series of different channels. And the fact that many organizations, uh, retail organizations, particularly larger ones, um, have individual uh, departmental uh, incentives, departmental systems that are not integrated across the entire value chain that the customer goes through. So see, these are some of the major challenges that retailers point to in terms of offering a high quality, uh, seamless and integrated customer experience to their customers. Now a key challenge that retailers alluded to is the fact that they have often fragmented business systems which make it uh, difficult to offer a consistent customer experience. Uh, although the use of sing what we might call single commerce systems, that is uh, a, a single set of, uh, a single software suite that uh, combines all aspects of a retail operation has, increasing, has increased. So only about a fifth of retailers were using this kind of suite in, in 2013. Uh, by 2015, it's increased to over, over, over a, a third. And this latest generation of retail software can support retailers to offer uh, the seamless and personalized experience, regardless of channel, that customers are really asking for. Uh, for example, in-store retail staff can access customer data and, and obtain a 360-degree customer history showing all purchases, returns, requests, store visits, regardless of the channel use. Uh, this allows in-store staff, for example, to offer a highly personalized experience, and it allows shoppers to switch easily between channels, uh, making the shopping process seamless and more convenient. Um, perhaps an example of this is that in-store shoppers uh, can access products on their internet shopping wish list and add them to an in-store transaction. Uh, or they might order online but arrange for product to be delivered on in-store through a click and collect type uh, offering. Uh, and we would argue that this kind of integrated commerce solution is really a fundamental uh, building block to maxim maximizing or improving the customer experience for Australia's retailers because without this kind of single system, the moments of truth can involve inconvenience, duplication and confusion for customers. But as I mentioned, uh, although the, the proportion of retailers with this kind of single solution has grown from 2013 to 2015, still two-thirds of retailers in Australia are not using one. We asked retailers more generally whether they find their current software adequate or inadequate uh, for managing their stores and managing their retail operations. Uh, and interestingly, uh, significant increase in the number of retailers bet between 2013 and 2015 who say that their current software is really now inadequate for, for, for delivering uh, store operations uh, and customer experience and needs improvement. And the number who think that software is, is either very useful or inadequate has declined compared to when we asked them before. So as I mentioned, two-thirds of retailers still have multiple business systems with disparate and generally unlinked software used for functions like point of sale, e-commerce, inventory management and financial management and the number of retailers who find this kind of uh, duplication and, and non-combined solutions not optimal has increased quite significantly uh, from 2013 to 2015 indicating I think that more and more retailers are recognizing that uh, old point based legacy software systems are often inadequate in today's uh, multi-channel world. And when we asked retailers who felt their current software was not fully adequate for their purposes, where's the main area of improvement that they see, uh, it actually links back again to the customer experience challenge. So the main area of improvement for retailers uh, that they see that their software could deliver is in improved customer management, the ability to manage their customers in a more effective, a more effective way. 
Uh, and overall, many retailers therefore feel that their current software is inhibiting them from offering an excellent customer experience in today's multi-channel environment. So just to wrap up really the findings of our survey, um, certainly retailers are saying uh, that business conditions continue to be tough. Uh, there's no significant sign of improvement uh, in 2015 compared to a couple of years back. In fact, in some, some areas it's probably seen as, as being worse. With multi, multiple channels and greater uh, choices available, customers are becoming more fickle. It's becoming more and more challenging to attract and retain customers. Customers are expecting a, a, a better uh, customer experience, but delivering this has become more challenging through the emergence of multiple channels that consumers are now using to interact uh, with uh, retailers. So this customer experience challenge is a significant one for Australia's retailers, and, and although many retailers are, are, are doing a lot to address it, uh, we find a lot, particularly smaller retailers, are not. And they're in danger really of being overtaken uh, by companies that are much more focused on delivering an excellent, seamless and holistic customer experience to their consumers. We would argue actually that key to, to, to moving in the direction of offering better customer experience is, is software because software can support you in addressing the four key elements of customer experience management in the multi-channel retail environment that consumers need at, uh, these days. Convenience, consistency, recognition <coughs> and personalization. So to conclude, customer experience is, is, a, is a critical uh, management process for today's retailers in Australia. Many are doing great things in terms of improving the customer experience their retailers have, but we argue many still have a way to go uh, and many still need to address some of these fundamental issues around improving the customer experience uh, for today's consumers. Thanks very much indeed. Great. Uh, thank Okay, sorry about that, Mark. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, apologies. Uh, some people looked like they had trouble seeing the slides early on. I think we, we rectified that, but um, uh, thank you very much for a, a very insightful presentation. So now is the time to get your questions in for Mark. Um, I some, some great insights there into, into how retail is tracking in Australia and what some of the key challenges are. Mark? Mobile traffic certainly on the rise, but, but conversion rates most retailers are finding is still very low. So um, what needs to happen to improve the rate of mobile purchasing? Yeah, we're, we're finding that as well, is that, uh, is that consumers are um, using their mobile devices as part of a uh, shopping integrated shopping process, uh, but often uh, are not proceeding right through to the transactional stage. Uh, for example, a significant number of consumers are using um, uh, going to a retailer's website to search for a nearby branch or a nearby outlet, um, and are often then visiting its store and concluding an in-store transaction. And I think what, what's happening in terms of the um, the lag in terms of, if you like, online conversion through mobile devices is that the the mobile shopping experience is still perhaps not fully optimal. Uh, consumers are still finding often their screen sizes are too small to really enable them to shop online effectively. They're often concerned about the connection dropping out uh, midway through an online mobile transaction. So although mobile devices are being used perhaps for, more for the information uh, uh, stage of a, of, a, of a process, the actual use of them for transactions is still um, uh, quite low. Uh, but we certainly think that as consumers now start to adopt these new generation mobile devices, often with larger screen sizes, as the speed and reliability of mobile networks improves, that more and more consumers will have confidence in using their mobile devices to transact, as well as for the earlier stages in the in the e-commerce process. Now, another interesting question is is how normally most people are trying to get this to go the other way, but how can we convert offline traffic to online conversions? <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, you're right. Most retailers, of course, use the online channel uh, initially as a way to attract customers into store uh, rather than the other way around. Uh, but there are actually quite a lot of uh, financial advantages actually in, in, in getting customers in store, but actually getting them to buy online and having delivered from, from centralized warehouses rather than having to maintain large amounts of inventory in store. 
Uh, and I think really one of the biggest challenges that many retailers face is the fact that they often set up e-commerce divisions as separate siloed businesses that really have their own KPIs, their own revenue, and there's really, really limited or no incentive for cross-traffic to be generated between the, the online business and the uh, physical business. Uh, so I, I think really the answer is, again, a fully integrated uh, organizational structure whereby um, people are rewarded, um, people's KPIs are met based on sales regardless of what channel those sales are made on rather than have any kind of siloed or separate organizational structure for the online and the in-store channel. Yeah, and I think uh, something you said earlier, e easier said than done, but that, that, that's certainly the vision, isn't it? Um, mm. one, of the, one of the data points you showed, 22% of the survey respondents said that attracting and re retaining customers was the key challenge, and that makes perfect sense. But, but only 4% saw multi-channel retail as their main challenge, and only 2% said that inadequate IT systems are their biggest challenge. So how, how do you interpret that? Does that mean they've all conquered multi-channel and IT, or do you just... Or do you think it means it's not a high priority? How do you interpret that? Uh, that uh... Uh, certainly, I, yeah, I certainly think it doesn't mean they're um, it. Was a, it was a single choice question, uh, and they were asked to pick, if you like, the, the single most important priority. Yes. Um, and I guess it's no great surprise that uh, attracting and retaining customers is the single most important priority, because without customers, you have no business. Uh, I mean, you can you can probably cobble your business through if you don't have good IT systems or if you don't have a multi-channel offering, you're not going to find your business disappears altogether, but you certainly will if you have got no customers. Um, so I think it's just a matter of priority. I, I think uh, uh, by, by no means can retailers uh, en masse have been said to have, uh, have cracked the, uh, the multi-channel world. Uh, they just really see that attracting and retaining customers is a priority. It's actually something that's becoming more and more difficult in today's multi-channel world. And so, uh, and just just on that, um, retailers using multi-channel and IT, uh, they can use it better as a means to meet that major challenge in attracting and retaining customers. And I guess where I want to go with that is, is what's the the barrier to stopping them do that? Look, I think um, the, 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 there are different barriers, but I think one of the main ones is um, a reluctance to change and often the fact that uh, retailers have invested traditionally in, in, in legacy systems, um, often separate legacy systems for each part of their business, whether it's inventory management, financial management, uh, perhaps uh, they've introduced a separate standalone e-commerce platform. And I just think uh, the many retailers are reluctant to, if you like, throw away all of those uh, traditional legacy systems and implement uh, one of these new generation of software suites that, that really provides them with the, the fully integrated suite of all of their requirements. So I think it's just a, a sort of a, a concern about the, the, the pay, perhaps the cost, the challenge, the disruption uh, of moving from existing legacy systems to the uh, new generation of integrated software. Well, that's, uh, I've got an interesting next question then um, in, in terms of non-investment. So systems can be expensive to update or improve. What are the other key areas that retailers could focus on to improve the, uh, the customer experience that don't involve investment in technology? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one to, to, to identify one that uh, doesn't necessarily involve an investment in technology. Uh, but I'd say the single most important aspect uh, of the customer experience that retailers should focus on, at least in the short term, is, is personalization. Uh, because many of the big uh, global um, brands are focused very heavily on offering a very personalized service and in many cases it's quite spooky the degree of personalization that you can get. You wonder how, how on earth does this retailer know this about me that he can offer such a tailored offering to my particular needs. So I think uh, you know the, the market is moving very fast in the, in, in the direction of, of highly personalized offerings to consumers uh, particularly among some of the big uh, leading technology driven retailers like Amazon and I think uh, retailers in Australia are going to have to follow that trend because that's the way the uh, that's the way that the market is moving very quickly. Yeah, that's that personalization point is really interesting, and uh, I saw a stunning presentation at the online retailer conference earlier this year from uh, Gilt Group, where they talked about um, the level of personalization that they go to with their customers. So Gilt is a, a flash sales site uh, specializing in, in high end fashion, and uh, they are at the point where they can, um, their online concierges can, can contact customers directly and say, look, um, we know what you love. This has just come out from uh, Jimmy Choo or whatever it is. 
would you like us to add it to your cart? And the answer more often than not is yes. And uh, this particular presenter was, was talking about the fact that um, uh, from there it's evolved to the point where these personal shoppers uh, that are employed by, by Gilt are actually authorised by some of the, some customers just to load up the cart, pay for it, send it to me. I know you'll get what I want. I think that's um, ultimate nirvana when it comes to uh, personalization. Mm. Now, uh, one other thing, I guess, you mentioned a couple of brands internationally that are doing it well, um, like Amazon. Is there anyone in, in the ANZ region that you see is getting this, this personalization piece right? Yeah, look, I think... Um, like Clearly, there are organisations like uh, like Shoes of Prey, I think, who are, who are, um, are, are uh, you know, actually interestingly, uh, an example of an organisation that's moved purely from an online uh, play into actually also complementing that with uh, with physical world uh, by opening uh, stores uh, or at least in-store concessions. So, an example, if you like, of how um, the multi-channel or the omni-channel world is is being uh, addressed both by online-only retailers who've now moved into physical stores as well as physical retailers who've moved into online stores. I think uh, uh, Shoot is a great, great example of a local Australian company that does offer this kind of highly personalised uh, service to its customers, uh, proving that you don't have to be one of the giants uh, globally to do so. But it is something that uh, smaller companies, uh, even operating purely in Australia, can do. And I guess the, the tools that we have access to now, I mean, Shoes of Prey is, is a great example, and they've invested heavily, you know, at, at a whole new level in, in mass customization, um, you know, to be able to, you can actually uh, design your own uh, footwear and, and have, it, have it made for you, which is, which is remarkable and, and obviously incredibly popular. Uh, but in terms of, you know, uh, basic, basic levels of, of personalization in Australia, is, is it fair to say that the, uh, the opportunities are greater now for uh, for retailers to leverage technology tools that might have been very expensive a few years ago um, to get better at, at delivering on personalization. Yeah, I think that that is the case, and, and, and I think um, uh, obviously one of the um, one of the great tools that's available is the, is the kind of software that you can get for, for big data analysis. Muted. Um, because. You know, as, as consumers use more and more of these channels, a vast amount of data is created. Uh, but to be able to offer a personalized service to customers, you've got to be able to mine, to analyze, to assess that data, uh, to understand what, what, how your customers behave and, and what their uh, requirements are, and then to deliver that personalization through the marketing messages uh, or, other, or other ways that you, you, you deal with them. So some of these big data analysis tools that are now quite readily available, even at, for small companies, I think are, are really key now to being able to offer that kind of highly personalized service uh, to consumers. Unmuted. Okay, well, I think we'll uh, um, wrap it up there unless anyone has any more questions, but I'd certainly like to, to thank you, Mark, for uh, your great presentation today. Uh, and if anyone does have any more questions, certainly email them through uh, and we'll try and get them answered for you. And uh, there, will be a, there was a video recording done of, of this presentation, which will uh, also be available very shortly too. Uh, and if, if anyone missed any part of it, you'll get that shortly. But thanks once again, Mark. Thank you very much to NetSuite for putting on the presentation today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening in during your lunch break.